Hello everybody, today we have the fantastic DigiStix drummer available for us to use. So, um, what I would like to do in this video tutorial is to give you an introduction how to use and navigate uh, DigiStix uh, drummer. Uh, we'll go into uh, further details in uh, other videos. So, I must say the user interface is really, really good. It's really neat in, and intuitive. So let's turn it on. So we have a big red power button on the top right hand side. So let's click on it. And as you can see, the meters have turned on. Uh, first thing to know is that if you touch and hold somewhere on the screen where you're not touching controls and then you move up, then you can scroll and review your other uh, parts or sections uh, of Digistix. So starting from the top left hand side we have meters and we also have a, a panic button if things uh, don't go right a pick indicator then we have the ability to select the bank that we would like to use there are three banks by default so the default bank the instruments bank and the user bank then for each bank we can select the drum kits near the drum kits we have a, a button a plus uh, button and this uh, reveals the option to create a new bank, to copy drum kit, and also to browse drum kit. I find the uh, browse drum kit uh, option really, really good because it allows you to see very clearly what are the banks and drum kits and samples associated with each other. And if you click on a uh, sample, like so, you can audition the sample. Uh, if you want to change a drum kit, you just select it and then click on the load kit button. So for now, let's um, stick to the acoustic close kit drum kit. So let's close uh, this window. <clears throat> Moving on, we have um, output controls where they allow you to uh, select if you want to apply some bit crunch effect and also select the output in decibel. We have the ability to turn on and off effects like delay, reverb, and chorus. And for each one of them, we can set the level. And also edit the different options. So this, in this case, this is the parameters for the delay effect. These are the parameters for the reverb effect. And also we can choose the mode for uh, uh, chorus, celeste, and uh, flanger. The next section of controls and a set of controls are to do with tempo and sync. So we have a metronome. If I click on it, I enable it. And then if I click on the um, play button just uh, underneath there, you can hear the metronome. I can adjust the tempo. And the level as well. And the swing as well. If um, I'm using a Digistix drummer inside in a host like AUM, then I can also force uh, Digistix to be driven by the host sync signals. Just clicking on the host sync button. And the next uh, set of controls uh, allows you to uh, set filters for low pass filters, high pass filter, to disable them, to set the cutoff, and also resonance. The next uh, set of controls allows you to apply other effects like overdrive and uh, set the level harmonics as well. Um, moving on, just below, uh, we have the uh, patterns section. So starting from the left, we have a group of buttons um, grouped by pattern. Here we can clear, copy and paste the pattern. Underneath that, we can do the same for, for we can load, save and delete songs, uh, which I will refer to it uh, in a moment. Then moving on, we have a button that allows us to uh, go back to the be beginning or the first steps. Uh, a button allows us to record, play. Another one which allow us to select a different pattern that we are working with. Then the number of bits which are played. Uh, if we want to do step recording or not. If we want to set the velocity for drum pads. If we want to enable the song mode or not. 
we have again a plus sign which allow us um sorry a plus button which allow us to access other functionality like the ability to clear the song browse drum kits clear sample references reset and mix the levels and uh, turning on and off auto pattern follow pad menus and pad status um then we have uh, two groups of buttons one for tracks which allows you to see um effectively all the samples in that drum kit between nine, 1 to 8 and also between 9 to 16 and we can also uh, set to view the events from 1 to 16 17 to 32 33 to 48 and 49 to 64 so we have 64 events so the way that um uh, you record patterns is very simple so let's try so you just touch on a step and corresponding sample and that will show a little dot and if we play as you can see it's just playing the bass drum on step one let's add others let's adjust the tempo Okay, so now let's change the pattern number. Let's go to pattern number two. Uh, we insert the bass drums, also some snare. Let's listen to it. Okay, so we go to pattern three. We do something similar, but here we also add some closed hats. As you can see, it's very simple to create a pattern. The other thing you can do, you can also touch, hold, and um, move around the different steps, and that will fill in and also remove as well um, different sample, samples per step. So like so, uh, in this case, we added alternate kicks within step five and eight, and then you can also touch and hold to remove them as well like so so moving on scrolling further down here we have an interesting uh, part of digisticks which allow us to see the pads uh, the song parameters the mixer parameters a mixer that allows you to um, control the levels for each of the samples in your drum kits and controllers and the eq um bend it bend eq equalizer so let's start from the first one the pads so yeah you can play different pads if you enable velocity there will be velocity sensitive so if you tap towards the top of the pad, it will be louder. If you tap um, towards the bottom, it will be lower as volume. Okay, that's good. Um, things you can do through these, of course, is you can start the recording and record um, in real time or use step recording as you like. One interesting feature that I find really useful here is um, the H button or hold um, button. If you click on that, then you can enable any of the other function on that uh, row. Uh, for example, if I select fade rolls, it will be stay active. And then if I go into the pattern, I can touch and hold, for example, on the clap. And voila, it will do a fade rolls for claps. Let's listen. Similarly, if I move to if I want to uh, put an accent on a particular step, so I select accent and then I go to step nine for that clap. I remove it and then I add it in. And as you can see, the color is uh, a bright red, so that will have an accent. Let's listen to it. Similarly, you can add the reverse, so which is quite interesting as an effect. Here we go. Let's listen to it. Mm -hmm. 
Let's try, for example, 16th triplet. Really good, really good. So let's remove this. Okay. Um, next, uh, we have the a button that allows us to go to the um, song uh, section. Here, as you can see, we have a, a button which allows us uh, from uh, uh, starting from the left, a button called Loop Song, which allows us to loop all the patterns that we chain together for the song. We can delete uh, the chain clear in uh, a particular um, chain or all of them we can add insert and empty different patterns inside the chain so in this case let's select pattern number one and then click add then let's add it again so that it is get it's played twice then we select pattern number two let's add it twice then select pattern number three and let's add it three times um and if we now enable the song mode, uh, if we go back to the pattern uh, parts of Digistex and we click on song mode, as you can see, if we play, this played uh, pattern frame, let's go back to the very beginning and let's click loop song and let's play. This is pattern one, the second time, pattern two. Pattern three. And then it starts again. As you can see, it is very simple to chain buttons together. Uh, we have a mixer uh, section. Um, as I said earlier, you can uh, adjust the volume of each individual samples. We have a controller. Um, section where for each of the sample here on the left you can select uh, for example the velocity per step but also the pitch pan and also the probability of notes being played and finally we have uh, an 8 band uh, equalizer which comes handy when enabled it will allow you to adjust uh, um, the level based on frequency okay <clears throat> moving on at the bottom here we have uh, uh, the sampler section on the left hand side you can record samples you can import them you can change the order you can back up restore on the right hand side we can play samples we can stop if they are playing uh, we can edit them only if they are not in a default folder and we can check the different options for that particular samples like you can loop a sample, reverse the sample, re-triggering, add the delayed reverb um, sense levels, etc, etc. And we can rename the sample, delete it and save the kit. Um, if um, we go to, if we change the bank to the user bank where I already copied the acoustic close kit, um, then uh, it will give you the ability now to edit the particular sample. And as you can see, here we have a new uh, window, the audio to edit window, which, where you can crop, clear, fade in and out, normalize, reverse your sample, etc., etc. Really, really quite powerful. Um, one of the things I really, really like is you can also import uh, practically complete um, bits uh, um, which is really really good and if i scroll down at the bottom you have um, the help uh, window which you can read at your leisure last thing to go through is at the very bottom there are three icons the first one from the left is an arrow pointing up which allow allows you to uh, select your uh, input source the next one is the keyboard. It will reveal the keyboard and you can hold uh, down your finger and scroll uh, left and right to select which part of the keyboard you're playing. And also you can select the third, uh, with the third icon 
the MIDI connection, including Bluetooth. I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, overview of Digistix Drama. Uh, thank you very much. See you next time.